Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And right now you're looking live at the Dow Jones Industrial Average where the circuit breaker was tripped again a short time ago. It's back open after a drastic nosedive that drop bringing a halt to trading for roughly 15 minutes. So right now investors very concerned that coronavirus could lead to a recession right here in the United States. We're going to keep a close eye on things, but right now the market is down almost nine and a half percent at 20,970, well, 987. Wow, good morning everybody. Welcome to your Monday. Thank you so much for being with us. A lot of people have the kiddos home thinking that we're going to go back to school after spring break, but right. uh, things have changed. And other things that have changed, you're gonna notice we're standing far apart. It's not because we don't like each other anymore. <laughs> it's because we're practicing what we preach. The, right. the, the suggestion is social distancing, six feet apart. So we are going to do that as well, and we're going to practice what we preach. We are, and uh, beginning today and uh, for the foreseeable future. So we know many of you are watching from home right now. Maybe the kids are home. There's a good chance that they are. And there oh, is a new schedule out right now and it's it's called the COVID-19 daily schedule. Can we just call it the new normal? Maybe It could be the new normal for lots of families, but it's actually a good idea. We don't know where, actually where it originated from, but no. this is the suggested schedule and it actually worked to so wake up before 9 a.m. Eat breakfast, make your bed, get dressed, put PJs in the laundry. That's right. There's the morning walk and then we dive right into academic time from 10 to 11. No electronics, Sudoku games, uh, flashcards, study guide, have them start journaling. But 11 to 12, you get some creative time, play Legos, magnetics, drawing, crafting, maybe music, bake, something like that. After lunch, and this is one of my favorite parts here because mm -hmm. obviously we've got to keep the kids' mind sharp, but get them involved in chores. Have them wipe Hallelujah. down the kitchen tables and chairs, wipe all door handles, light switches, desktops, wipe down both bathrooms. Uh, that includes the sinks and the toilets. And then shh, from 1 to 2.30, it's quiet, quiet time. time reading puzzles maybe take a nap something like that back to the books 230 to 4 that's not too bad mm -hmm. electronics are okay have them load some games up maybe prodigy or educational shows that's not a bad idea afternoon get some fresh air from four to five you know bikes walk the dog just play outside after dinner five to six six to eight free time uh kids uh showers what does it say kids, kids showers times three okay times because that, that's if they have three kids i guess okay i guess so eight o'clock is bedtime and this is my favorite part nine o'clock is bedtime for all of the kids who followed the daily schedule and didn't fight right so they can stay up an extra hour but they have to go along with the rest of our new normal schedule here but we're going to have stuff like this throughout the newscast and also going forward we have some on our website yeah, as well so just visit ksat.com lots of ideas of things you can do with your kiddos but this COVID-19 schedule I think is fabulous ksat kids section of our website let's take a look at your rundown Cases of the coronavirus in Europe spiraling. More than 360 deaths in one day in Italy, a 25% spike, the deadliest day since the outbreak began. Well, the CDC is recommending gatherings of 50 people or more be canceled or postponed over the next eight weeks because of the coronavirus. A milestone in the effort to develop a vaccine for the coronavirus. The first clinical trial begins today in Seattle, but officials say any vaccine is still at least a year away. The San Antonio International airport is open for business and it wants travelers to know that it is also on the job of keeping them safe during the coronavirus pandemic. Signs telling people to cover their cough. There also are additional hand sanitizer pumps all around the terminals. The Federal Reserve is cutting interest rates to zero. The last time the prime rate was this low was during the global recession about a decade ago. Tennessee brothers who stockpiled more than, get this, 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizers and wipes to resell at a profit when the Attorney General investigated them for price gouging, they decided to donate their stash to charity. The coronavirus pandemic has the weekend box office hitting a 20-year low. Audiences largely stayed away from theaters after health officials urged social distancing. When the audience can't come to your show, you bring your show to the audience. At least that's what stars including Jennifer Garner and Laura Benanti are encouraging young actors to do on social media. Our Massachusetts family got pretty creative when they weren't able to celebrate Grandma's 100th birthday yesterday because of the pandemic. So instead of being with her, they decided to sing from outside her window. We've yeah. all heard the need to stop touching our face. Now there's yeah. an app for that. A man invented an app that vibrates your Fitbit anytime you go to touch your face. It's called Jalapeno. Wow. Because you're supposed to remember like you were chopping jalapenos. Don't touch your face. <laughs> 
Jalapeno. Yeah, just to make sure this morning, we actually had the measuring tape out here on the desk. To make sure that we were six feet apart. Yeah, yeah. it's weird though. It feels very, this you know, is it's like. Really, now some, to be honest, some newscasts, some anchors, they space them out kind of like this, but we've always been. Always, yeah, we've, we've kind like of not. Close. Be, yeah, close. Yeah. That's fair. Because it feels like I have to shout at you now. I know. But we have microphones and we don't. We're going to talk to David coming up. Uh, Justin Horn is standing by as we go outside with live cam, and he's over in the weather lab. Where you're always this this, this you're time always, of morning. Yeah, this this works. This it's, part. it's the same. I've been working on my elbow bump too. I'm getting pretty good at it. No more shaking. We're going to have to aim higher. Oh, that's right. Well, I'll, I'll go low. <laughs> okay. You'll be all right. Uh, we've got a little bit of fog out there right now. We're dealing with some of that here around San Antonio. Not a big issue, but as you get out towards Gonzales, visibility has come down to about half a mile. Also seeing a little bit of fog there around Victoria. Temperatures today should be up around 78. We'll have about a 20% chance of showers. Uh, mostly cloudy skies. Of course, we had some of those storms overnight that uh, came off the mountains out of Mexico, moved east. We didn't see a whole lot here in San Antonio, but there's still some leftover shower activity. Very, very light there southeast of San Antonio. Another little cluster south and west of Cotua. Temperature wise, mid 60s. It's still warm. It's still humid. That has not changed. What has changed? The mold. It has jumped up into the high category. It's at 8,560 today. That's a huge jump. And Oaks still there. So that's causing a lot of people uh, some misery there. Uh, rain chances, just a 20% today chance today. That'll be the case tomorrow. Thursday, we start to up the rain chances a little bit. Right now, Friday is our best day for rain as a cold front comes through, and it will cool us down, too. We're going to talk more about that in just a few minutes. Guys? Thank you very much, Justin, right now. And we've got a report of an accident out here, and it looks like SAPD is on the scene. 410 Jackson Keller area, slow going in that area, in those right-hand lanes and on that right shoulder. Developing news this morning out of Missouri. Five people are dead after a shooting at a gas station in Springfield, and among the deceased, a police officer and the gunman. Horrible news. Police say the suspect crashed into the gas station, ran into the store, and started firing. Officers later found the gunman dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Right now, investigators are still working to find a motive for this shooting. And top stories we're following for you today. We now know the name of a man killed over the weekend during a crash on the city's west side. San Antonio police identifying him as 42 Robert D. Rodriguez. The crash happened just after 1230 Saturday morning in the 5500 block of Commerce. Witness told police Rodriguez was speeding when he drifted across Incoming traffic crashed head on into a pole. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police said investigators later found Rodriguez with two gunshot wounds to his right thigh. A friend of Rodriguez told police he had been shot the previous day, but he didn't seek medical treatment. The case remains under investigation. It is going to be another very busy news day. Turning now to the coronavirus pandemic affecting the Alamo City, Governor Greg Abbott and San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg will hold a news conference this afternoon to provide us all an update on the efforts to combat the virus. The news conference is scheduled for 2.30 this afternoon at the San Antonio Emergency Operations Center. Abbott and Nierenberg will be joined by representatives from the Texas Division of Emergency Management and the Texas Department of State Health Services. The uh, news conference will also address the drive through coronavirus testing site here in San Antonio. We we will have a crew there, of course, and be live streaming it as it happens on KSAT.com. And USAA will be donating $1 million to nonprofits right here in San Antonio. Comes amid growing response to coronavirus. The money will be dispersed between the San Antonio Food Bank, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, Meals on Wheels, Haven for Hope, and United Way of San Antonio. USAA CEO Wayne Peacock says the donation was made to help those organizations, quote, serving our most vulnerable residents, end quote. The news comes a day after a USAA employee here in San Antonio tested positive for the coronavirus. The employee had not been on the campus, though, since March the 6th. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. Look for it on our homepage. San Antonio area schools remain closed this week because of the virus, but in uh, the extended break districts are ensuring students still have access to food by providing curbside meal services. Our Max Massey joins us live from Stahl Elementary, which is part of Northeast ISD. So, Max, what do the preparations look like? Good morning, guys. Yes, schools are closed, but the preparations must go on, making sure that families get the meals that they need. Take a look right here. We got fresh greens, and then right behind it, we have a lot of workers hard at work early this morning, making sure that lunches are ready to go. We are joined by the Director of Nutrition for NEISD, Ms. Cates. So what is the logistics for families today? Well, for families today, we're going to be serving curbside in front of the school where the normal uh, drop-off is. It's going to be uh, picking up breakfast and lunch all in one stop that they can take home, consume whenever they need to. 
Uh, and so what has preparation looked like for today? Preparation has been, it's out of our realm of comfort level. It's not what we do every day, but uh, uh, the, this type of service, but we do prepare meals every day and we're preparing familiar me menu items to the students. Trying to give kids also a choice. We're giving them breakfast that has cereal, one of their favorites, with milk and juice. And then lunch, we're giving them a choice of a meatless and a, uh, and a lunch with meat. So, so, you, so you have a menu in, the, yeah. in your hand. What are some of the options we have today? Today, uh, for breakfast, it's going to be cereal, juice, and milk. And Oh man, I was just saying, I want to know what they're serving. And I, as soon as they started saying it, we lost it. It's cereal, juice, and milk I heard for breakfast. We'll try to get them back. Yeah, but all right, coming up, by the way, tonight, convicted of killing two babies and suspected of murdering dozens more, KSAT News at 9 uncovers the story behind one of the most shocking suspected serial killers in Texas history, Janine Jones. That's right. You'll hear from the families, the prosecutors, and the experts who know too well the decades long story of the killer nurse. Watch it tonight on KSAT.com or anywhere you stream our content. 909 right now, 65 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. It's a dog who can't see or hear that has had a major impact in his community. Why this Seguin dog is not letting his disability stop him from serving others. And then there were two, the top remaining Democrats facing off in another debate last night, how Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders attempted to prove their leadership qualities to the country, staring down a crisis. And if you want to eat more chicken, you're going to have to do it through the drive through What changes Chick-fil-A is implementing amid the coronavirus pandemic? Well, trading was halted earlier right now, and the free fall continues. The Dow is down roughly 10 points, 2292, on a volume of 20,883. Welcome back. It is now 913. Chick-fil-A is doing its part to fight coronavirus and a soldier's remains returned home last night. A hiker rescued after a bizarre accident and a puppy with an unusual look. We say good morning on this Monday to Mr. David Sears. Hey, Hi, David. David. Hello. Hello, hello, hello way hello, over hello. there. Yeah, this is what we got to do these days. How are right? you? How are you? How are you? Doing fine, 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 fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you. You got to do what you got to do, right? Yep. yep. All right. Y'all stay over there. If you are a Chick-fil-A lover, you can still get your chicken and waffle fries fix. You're just going to have to eat it in your car or at home or at least somewhere other than inside the restaurants. Chick-fil-A closing all its dining rooms for the time being in response to the coronavirus. They say it is a move to help limit person to person contact. They want to support the CDC along with state and local guidelines. Some of their locations will offer curbside delivery or mobile order options. You're urged to check their website or app for info and updates. While most of the world is focused on the coronavirus, there is still a war going on in the Middle East, and we are witnessing another casualty of that war. That is the flag-draped casket of 27-year-old specialist Juan Miguel Mendez Covarrubias, who was killed during a rocket attack in Iraq. He was one of two Americans killed, along with a British service member. The soldier was killed last Wednesday, the dignified transfer taking place last night at Dover Air Force Base. Must be the hazards of hiking around boulders. A 300-pounder fell on a hiker in Arizona. He was being treated for extensive lower extremity injuries. The man was visiting from out of state. He was hiking Camelback Mountain Saturday, and while he was on the trail, he leaned on the rock to let other hikers go by, and then that boulder rolled right over him. Rescuers had to use special tools to get the rock off of him. He was flown to a trauma facility. And here is your, oh, how cute shot of the day. That is a little puppy with only one ear on the top of its head. What? Looks like a unicorn. Just huh. after birth, the mother was trying to tear open the amniotic sac when she bit off the pup's ear. Her other ear started growing at the top of her head. And believe it or not, she has good hearing. Her owner says she has a big personality and just loves life. There you go. That's adorable. What a sweetheart. Aww. Isn't it nice? So. Hey, by I the like way, it. real quick. Uh -huh. I was going to talk about the uh, the NBA is talking about coming back and maybe June, maybe June and having some games, maybe start with the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And they might be playing at their practice facilities, though, because it's probably still be without fans, but they would at least get the end of the season in. So it's still a very fluid well, situation. If they start, so if they would come back and start with the playoffs, it would just be wherever the standings are wherever now. That's it. Right now. So we wouldn't be in it. And in order to keep from, you know, messing up next season, they would probably shorten up the, uh, the, the rounds of the playoffs. Maybe the first round would only go three or only go five games. 
and then the second round, th five, and then, you know, seven for the last two rounds or something like that. I'm sure they're going through all But it's all, all up the in the scenario. air. We just have to it's, see what happens. Yeah, that it's part's up in the air. But if, it, if they did decide to go ahead and, with yeah. the current standings, we don't make the cut by nope. what? Nope. Uh, nope. If that's the a way handful of games. to do it by. But, well, we're four games out of that eighth playoff spot. Okay. Like, I think there was 19 left when, I think when that's they right. suspended it. So, okay. you know, chances right. are not good. Thanks, so. David. But anyway, that's, there's your NBA update. Okay. Thank you, David. All right. Appreciate it as always. And uh, see interesting see to see if they can come back in June. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see you. It'll be interesting see. to see. It will be interesting to see. Also interesting to see our forecast as we turn the page from winter to spring. We're expecting a cool down. I a, love this. A cold front. Yeah, and it's going to move through. I think it will cool us down quite significantly. The hope is that it'll give us some rainfall too. We did get some rain overnight. The big numbers were off to our north and west up there across the Edwards Plateau and Hill Country. Look at some of these numbers. 1.44 in Rock Springs, 1.5 out towards the Devil's River State Natural Area, Del Rio, nearly 1.6 inches. So those were the big winners. We had that line of storms coming out of West Texas. Tried to hold together, just did not make it to San Antonio. Stinson did pick up two hundredths of an inch. The uh, airport, though, nada, nothing. So uh, we're going to have to wait to, probably till later in the week before we have any significant rain chances. But uh, some of that rain did fall over the aquifer, at least the far western extent of it. So that's some good news here. We should see the aquifer numbers hopefully go up just a little bit in the coming days. Radar right now doesn't show us a whole lot. We have some leftover showers from that uh, activity overnight. Most of that is moving out to the east. We've got a couple of light returns down there south and west of Catula as well. It's possible that we could see a couple more pop up showers as we go into this afternoon and also next couple days we'll have to watch what happens off to our west out in Mexico. Some of those storms could work off the mountains and affect some of our western counties again. So those will be some of the things we're watching going forward. Right now though, 65 degrees and cloudy. Dew point is at 62. East southeast really winds at about nine miles per hour. Not a lot of fog here around Bear County, although the uh, clouds are hanging fairly low at this point. Uh, roadways look pretty good. That's 410 in Jackson Keller. All good. Some fog though off to our east and so places like New Braunfels and Gonzales you may see those visibilities come down a little bit. Temperature wise mid 60s. It's still warm. It's still humid. We should get close to 80 today. Probably upper 70s this afternoon. If we see a few peaks of sun you may see some higher numbers in that. But right now we're expecting a mostly cloudy day. Uh, 63 Fredericksburg, 67 Uvalde, 70 now in Cristo Springs and down there around Catula. Dew points, as you might imagine, in the mid-60s, that's very muggy. That doesn't really change until Friday. This front, though, should knock down some of that humidity. And here's a look at the dew points going forward. We stay right there in the mid-60s, and then boom, here comes our front. These numbers drop, and we'll see some uh, slightly lower humidity on Saturday. Still, though, we'll have some chances of rain. High temperatures today, 77, 78 here in San Antonio. We'll see some 80s on the map too, I think, down to the south and west of town. Here's the forecast going forward. So uh, as we get towards 6 o'clock today, not a whole lot, maybe an isolated shower. And then tomorrow, uh, we're talking uh, still fairly quiet, maybe an isolated shower or two. But we'll have to watch some of this activity out to the west. This is Wednesday, early Wednesday morning, some showers building out west. Maybe a few of those work towards San Antonio, much like what we saw this morning. And then uh, Wednesday afternoon, just some isolated stuff. But by Thursday, our rain chances start to come up some as this front gets a little bit closer. And it looks like on Friday, that will be our best chance for rain as this front moves through. We'll get some showers and thunderstorms and then some cooler weather. Saturday, even though it will be cooler, we still may get some showers back in the forecast. So the, there are some chances of rain here down the line, but Friday's probably our best chance. 77 again, 78 today, 20% chance of some isolated showers this afternoon. And then uh, we'll be looking at uh, 81 tomorrow, 81 on Wednesday. Spring officially starts Thursday, and there's that front knocking temperatures down into the 60s and maybe even 50s on Saturday with some chances of rain. Wow, that's cool, literally. Literally. <laughs> it is. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Hey, we, interesting tweet from Governor Greg Abbott just a short time ago. He just said star testing requirements have been waived for the 1920 school year. They will continue to empower schools to make the best decisions to protect their communities from COVID-19. And again, the governor going to be in town later on today and KSAT will be there. 920, 65 degrees. Still to come on GMSA at 9, a blind and deaf dog in Seguin is not letting his disability stop him from serving others who are disabled in South Texas. You don't want to miss the heartwarming story of Braille, the therapy canine. That's coming up next. 
Welcome back. 923. When he's not raiding bags of chips off picnic tables at various social events, he's serving others in need of therapy. We are talking about Braille, the unique therapy canine from Seguin. It doesn't let his limitations stand in the way of helping people. Daphne Gray spoke, uh, rather shows us why Braille is one dog who shouldn't be underestimated in this week's What's Up South Texas. If everybody did one right thing, there wouldn't be many wrong things. So I took him. He may seem like a normal and playful dog, yeah. but this 11 year old pooch is far from normal. He's blind and deaf and his name happens to be Braille. First thing is they feel sorry for him. Despite his limitations, Braille is also an active therapy canine who provides friendship, companionship and entertainment to anyone who needs it. He would have been euthanized and what a waste that would have been because he does so much. When Braille was six months old, his owner and partner Kelly Kinney was reluctant to accept him from the Guadalupe County Animal Control. I thought they were crazy. I live in the country. What am I going to do with a blind, deaf, six month old puppy? And then I felt bad and I brought him home. Turned out Braille was more independent and capable than she thought. Even I started to notice there was something special about him. Like his name, Braille uses his paws to feel where he is at and where he is going. Good boy. He responds to touch commands since he can't hear them. I go up and down and he knows that's his command to lay down. But something a command could not teach him how to have a larger than life personality. He does snort. When he gets very excited, especially when he is rough housing with some children, Braille pretty much just likes everything, uh, except for dog treats and dog food. He drinks red wine. He loves to ride the carousel. It looks like a hood ornament on the ride. Though Braille is extremely spoiled, he's 100% healthy. But the thing that keeps him going the most, his love and compassion for those with disabilities at Morgan's Wonderland. He is especially fond of children with autism or Down syndrome. Struggling with ADHD and a learning disability, Kelly says Braille has inspired her self-confidence. I have learned more about compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, and strength and bravery from this dog. Though he can't talk, Braille's impact has an important lesson behind it. It doesn't matter if you are blind, deaf, autism, down syndrome it doesn't matter everybody's equal and that's a good boy for what's up south texas he's the one that makes the difference i'm just along for the ride japhany gray ksat 12 news what a special dog kelly and braille were at our cattle drive hanging out he's such a sweet boy and, kelly and sweet yeah braille was getting plenty of attention and braille has a fiesta medal we're just gonna have kind of hang on to it till november now okay. right we'll still lead it we'll still collect them it'll still be great yes. what a special dog 927 65 degrees much more ahead on gmsa at nine the coronavirus pandemic affecting the latest democratic presidential debate a look at some of the changes implemented and a recap of what went down an elderly Floresville couple going viral after a picture of them sharing a heartbreaking moment through a nursing home window was posted online. Eric and RJ will have details. Our state. But districts like NEISD want to make sure that their students are getting the meals that they need. We are going to give you an inside look into the kitchen and all the preparations that's coming up right after the break. Checking the roads as we head to break. There's uh, 410 and Jackson Keller. No problems to report. I think I see a little bit of sunshine out there. Welcome back. It is now 930. With schools in and around San Antonio closed this week, there is a big question about meals. Districts like Northeast ISD are offering free curbside meal pickups for their students. Max Massey joins us live at Stahl Elementary. Max, how does it look out there this morning? Good morning, guys. It is calm and quiet here now, but we are expecting the lines to pick up at 1130. That is when the curbside meals begin, and we are joined by the Director of Nutrition for NEISD. What does the logistics look like for today? Well, today, parents can come drive through the line at any one of our 32 sites, and they can go to our website and see what sites, and it's services from 1130 to 130. It's not just PB&J. You guys have an extensive menu going on. Yes, we have a variety of choices. Uh, when the kids come through in the car with the parents, they'll get a breakfast and a lunch, and they can choose between a meat or a meatless entree. Okay, you have the menu in front of you. You want to yes. read some of these off? So, uh, today is going to be a turkey lunchbox or a yogurt lunchbox. Tomorrow for lunch is going to be a hamburger or a farm fresh salad. 
Wednesday will be a nacho box or a wild butter box. Thursday, a chicken burger or a yogurt lunch box. Uh, Friday, a pepperoni pizza pack and a farm fresh salad. Daily breakfast is gonna be cereal, juice, and milk, pretty much. Now, this isn't just local. You guys have been working with state and federal officials. So what does that preparation look like? Well, uh, from the federal level, they immediately said we we're gonna uh, open up so that schools can feed however they can, curbside, whatever. And so our superintendent met with us immediately once the schools were closed and said, what can we do? And we made plans. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, if you have any questions about the pickups here at NEISD or the other districts, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. Live cam taking us outside once again. That's not a very pretty picture. No, the, the ceilings are starting to lower a little bit. We're getting some fog here in San Antonio. And there's some fog around the area. Nothing that's terribly thick, but they'll probably be around for another hour or so. We also saw some showers overnight. Didn't get much here in San Antonio, but there's still a few leftover late showers on the radar. you got to go far to the east of town and then a couple of showers down there around Cotula. Uh, visibility down to six miles here in San Antonio, although that picture... Uh, maybe it looks like it was a little bit lower. New Braunfels, Gonzales also seeing some fog at this hour. If you're out west, so far you're doing okay. Temperature wise, 65 Tarpley, 64 Boulevardy, 64 New Braunfels, 66 in Forestville. Everybody's dealing with cloudy skies. We'll see a lot of clouds today. Maybe a couple peaks of sun as we get into the afternoon. And an outside chance for a shower or two. We'll call it a 20% chance. High temperatures today right around 78. We do have some more chances of rain down the line. In fact, some good chances by the end of the week. We'll talk about it coming up. Thank you, sir. Trans guide right now. The roads look relatively dry, especially there at 37 and Jones Avenue. There's Highway 281 at Isom. Well, Democratic presidential candidates Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders have fundamental differences over health care. Biden plans to build on Obamacare. Sanders wants Medicare for all. Well, last night, the candidates took their long-running health care debate and applied it to the coronavirus pandemic that's gripping our nation. CNN's Whitney Wilde is in Washington with the highlights of last night's debate. With this debate moved from Arizona to Washington, D.C., with no live audience, the dynamics inside this debate stage so different. In addition, this is the first time we're seeing only two candidates go one-on-one. -on -one. Cool. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders participated in an unconventional debate. Instead of shaking hands, they bumped elbows and attempted to prove their leadership qualities to a country staring down a crisis. This is like a war. And in a war, you do whatever is needed to be done to take care of your people. In the midst of this crisis, we have got to act in an unprecedented way. To better protect the candidates, the debate moved from Phoenix to a studio in Washington, D.C. with no audience. The podium stood at least six feet away, adhering to social distancing guidelines. I have to take and issues related to the coronavirus dominated the debate. As a result of the virus here, the, the coronavirus, what we have got to do also is understand the fragility of the economy and how unjust and unfair it is that so few have so much and so many have so little. People are looking for results, not a revolution. This is a pivotal point in the race for president. Sanders hopes to keep his progressive message at the top of mind. We are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people. It has nothing to do with Bernie's Medicare for all. The front runner, Biden, faces two challenges, bringing Sanders supporters to his camp and focusing on the man they all want to beat, President Donald Trump. The existential threat to the United States of America <laughs> is Donald Trump. And finally, one of the biggest pieces of news to come out of this debate, former Vice President Joe Biden committing to a female running mate, Senator Bernie Sanders saying he's strongly leaning in that direction. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. Uh, speaking of social distancing, you're going to notice some changes here at KSAP. Between newscasts today, we actually blocked out some new camera shots. We are going to practice what we preach in social distancing, so you'll see your anchor standing farther apart. It's not because we don't like each other. Or there's anything bad going on. It's just because we want to be smart and play it safe, just like all of you at home should be doing as well. Well, the kids are probably home right now. There's a very, very good chance. And earlier we told you about a new daily schedule that you can get into the routine with with the kids. Well, if you're looking for things to do with the kids other than that, we have more suggestions for you. As a matter of fact, we have nine of them. They're pretty good ones. Nine TV-free ideas other than watching KSAT 12 News. Yeah, you can watch KSAT 12. That's educational.
we think. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Number one, read, read, read. Make it fun. Use silly voices. Read quality literature that you and your kids can enjoy together. Make some Play-Doh or slime. Nothing wrong with that. It's usually just a combination of flour, oil, and cream of tartare with some water and food coloring, of course. So easy peasy. Play as if you're at the grocery store with stock shelves. <laughs> That's funny. Also, who says bubbles are just for outside? You could do bubbles in the bath, for example, or in the kitchen if there's an area that's easy to wipe down. Number five, go through your basement or attic. Find things your kids are no longer playing with. Even these are odd trinkets or things that seem outdated. Wrap them in aluminum foil for them to unwrap. Oh, that's fun. And bake something, like make a pizza. That can be fun. Uh, this has got my ghost rage written all over it. Build mm -hmm. a fort. Of course, you give that guy a box, even at his age. He's entertained for hours. That's true. That's a true <laughs> statement, everybody. Uh, I, if you do bake something or make a pizza, have an indoor picnic with what you bake. There you go. Uh, step back, literally. Uh, no. Let your child play, even if he or she doesn't have a sibling. If you have more than one, that's an even better reason for you to have them read in the corner. Don't feel bad. They're, you're not there to play with your them every second. What's that say? Is, uh, it's basically saying, don't be afraid to give them a book, put them in the corner and say you need some quiet ah, educational yes. time. You don't have to entertain them 24-7 just because they're home. You may be way over there, but you're making sense. Thank you. <laughs> right now it's 938, 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Don't quarantine alone. An Oklahoma City shelter is using a unique pitch to get abandoned animals adopted. Eric and RJ have a look at that and more stories trending on KSAT.com. Well, we also have to cover the bad news as well. And the market is still down over 2,000 points, down right about 9% in early trading. And we're back, Leslie. Our COVID-19 coverage on KSAT.com extensive as we try to cover many different angles and make sure we're all up to date on the latest information. With a look at the trending stories this morning, Eric Hernandez and RJ Marquez join us with more on that. Hey, guys. Good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Guys. I'm, I'm liking this distance. And yeah. Sometimes Mark can get a little... <laughs> A little evasive in your space. Yeah, just, just a tad. Only because my feet funny. away, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, we first start with our top story yesterday online of a heartbreaking moment between an elderly couple. Yeah, this photo right here is going viral on social media. Here's the story. Every day, Jimmy Gonzalez visits his wife Isabel at Regency Manor in Floresville. Well, last week, most nursing homes started prohibiting visitors due to COVID-19 concerns. The couple, who are both in their 90s, were heartbroken that they couldn't spend time together. So Jimmy had to resort to visiting his wife through a window. Yeah, their daughter posted this moment on Facebook over the weekend, and her post said that they are both sad they can't hold hands right now. Luckily, Isabel is not in a nursing home permanently. She is just there to rehab a femur fracture and will hopefully get to go home soon. But I'm sure this is the case for many mm -hmm. of those who have family members in nursing home and in these facilities that they can't be able to actually go visit them. Oh, yeah, and uh, having to maybe FaceTime or just to kind of resort different to some options. different methods yeah, and exactly. to try and keep in touch with them. But that's still good that they are still managing to kind of uh, keep in touch with one another, stay in contact. Yeah. Next up, if you are having to quarantine or stay home this week, don't do it alone. That's the pitch Oklahoma City Animal Welfare is using to try to get pets adopted. Uh huh. Oklahoma City Welfare says welfare says a loving animal might just calm your nerves. In a survey by the Human Animal Bond Research Institute and the Cohen Research Group, 74% of pet owners said they had mental health improvement from pet ownership. As far as shelters here in town, as far as we know, they are still open and they would definitely welcome you to go in and pick up or adopt a dog or a cat. Yeah, I mean, my dog is like the best to have around oh, yeah. in these time frames. So <laughs> yeah. I know you guys have a dog too, but I couldn't imagine like I would even if I didn't have a pet, I'd probably consider at this point when you're alone in your home for several yeah. days, you need some yeah, Can very you relaxing to have your dogs with you. And they're probably wondering, like, well, why are they why here? Home? <laughs> yeah, why are they with us right now? <laughs> but, uh, no, it is definitely cool stuff there, so make sure you check that out. And finally, you can count on the Battle of Flowers Parade to be a big part of Fiesta despite the 11-day party buoy move to November, RJ. Yeah, the Parades Association held a news conference to reassure the public that the fan favorite for Fiesta will be held. The Battle of Flowers Association president, Anna Laura Block, said the decision for the parade to go on was made after discussions were held with key stakeholders. Now, in addition, the Battle of Flowers Band Festival, will, which is held at Alamo Stadium, will also be held. Not all events are planning to go on in November, though. Oyster Bake has announced they will not participate and will see everyone April 2021. Fiesta this year, as we know, will now be moved November 5th 
through the 15th. And those two, there's like two weeks in November that, mm -hmm. in end of October, November that are going to be super busy. Mm -hmm. You have the day, you have Halloween, Day of the Dead, yeah, you have elections, yeah. you have the fiesta, worst fest is also yes. at the same time. So there's a <laughs> yeah. lot going on. So I guess get ready for fall 2020. Uh, yeah, November is going to be a jam packed month guys so uh, thanksgiving yeah. thanksgiving, thanksgiving. There you yeah. Go. yeah that's yeah it's just we're gonna have to staff up but we'll be ready it's, guys it's, it's, RJ yes. and Erica, thank you guys thank Wait, you no, well we have the national don't cut us off just yet mark calm sorry. down sorry all right <laughs> today <laughs> is excited about panda day go ahead <laughs> <It was. laughs> today Forget is national panda day. panda day tomorrow is saint patrick's day yeah wednesday is awkward moments day like right now <laughs> Thursday, Certified Nurses Day, and uh, God bless these nurses. <laughs> I know, care, right now uh, they really, they're really yeah. uh, doing some great work. Friday is National Ravioli Day. Saturday is Single Parent Day and Corn Dog Day. Come. Your mix. And nice. Sunday is Mark's favorite day, Goop Off Day. Can I say farewell for now? Yes. Mm -hmm. RJ, Erica, Thanks, thank guys. you. For now. Thanks, guys. Now. So it's been crazy around here lately. Uh, I think you tried the store Saturday. Go to the H-E-B, right? Uh, actually, I hired shipped, but it was hilarious okay. because the guy kept, the, the, our shopper, Yeah. it was like, the store does not have this item, the store right. does not have that right. item, the store does not have this item, I mean, is this okay instead, or is that okay instead? And I was like, how bad is it? He goes, it's really bad. Well, I went to a Target late yesterday, and the cashier looked, let's just say, a little frazzled. I said, I have a question for you. She said, what? And I said, are people being nice? And she goes, I'll say this, they're being nicer. Oh, that's good. Well, I mean, so, remember, it's not their fault. If, if no. HEB's out of something, it's your neighbor's fault, probably <laughs> not their fault. <laughs> yeah. People are buying too much of everything. We're all in this together, and I think we can all do better. How about that? I think that? you're right about that. Can yeah. we do better weather-wise? I'd like to have cooler weather. We may get some eventually. Oh, good. Maybe towards the end of the week. And, you know, now's a bad time with everything that's going on to have allergies because, mm -hmm. you know, sniffly, sneaky, you, you got to know what your symptoms are. But uh, we are dealing with oak. We're moving right into the peak of the season, guys. So here we are today, and we're almost right there. It's in moderate, 170, the oak count. Mold actually surpassed it and went to the high category today. So it's sort of a double whammy. But oak and... Uh, mold big issues and uh, looks like oak will continue to rise before we start to see that decline as we get into april let's take a look at the temperature extremes across the country over the last 24 hours rio grande village there in far west texas got up to 93 yesterday one of the hot spots in the country cold spot clayton lake maine down to negative 13 so uh, we had quite a spread 106 degree temperature difference between the high and the low we have still are going to see some of these big differences as some of this cold air sort of sits up to the north, and we're still dealing with the warm stuff here down to the south. Time lapse shows a lot of cloud cover. We didn't get much rain here in San Antonio, a couple sprinkles, but uh, nothing at the airport officially. 65 degrees right now. Dew point is at 62. East southeasterly winds at around 9 miles per hour. And uh, looking at the satellite picture, we've got a lot of clouds here. Don't think we're going to see much sun today, but the uh, past couple of days we've had a few peaks here and there, and you can see the cloud covers uh, fairly thick temperatures in the mid 60s at the moment. And we'll zoom out some, and uh, you can see the extent of the cloud cover. Basically, everybody's under cloudy skies right now. We are seeing some 70s on the map. Carrizo Springs down to Catula, Laredo, also checking in at 70 at this hour. Fog, a little bit of an issue. We're not seeing too much of it here in San Antonio. Visibility is okay at this point at six miles, but. Uh, New Braunfels, Gonzales, those are some of the places where fog has been a little bit thicker, although we are seeing some improvement there too. Here is the Doppler radar, and the uh, showers uh, continue to hold on south of Beeville, uh, down around Corpus, south of Catula along I-35. Not seeing much for us though here around San Antonio and a couple showers working their way towards Houston. That's sort of what's left over from last night. We showed you some of those rainfall totals earlier over in Anch and Del Rio, Rock Springs, where some storms moved in last night. Dew point wise, still in the mid 60s, still very humid. That will fall off a little bit with a frontal boundary on Friday, and we'll see some slightly drier air move in by the weekend. Still, we're expecting some rain chances on Saturday. So let's take a look at the future cast here. This is this afternoon. A couple of isolated showers possible. We can't rule it out. 20% chance today. I do want to watch what happens late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. So this is 3 a.m. Wednesday morning. We could get another line of showers and storms coming out of West Texas. That'll be something to keep an eye on, especially for our western counties. Otherwise, just some slight chances Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, our rain chances start to pick up some as this frontal boundary gets a little bit closer. And it is on Friday. When the frontal boundary moves through, our rain chances should be at their highest. 
and we could see some showers and storms out of that. Behind it, some cooler air, but still some showers on Saturday. So rain chance is still there all the way through the seven day forecast. 78 degrees today, 20% chance of rain. And then look for 81 Tuesday, 81 Wednesday. Just slight chances there, but we have it to a 30% chance as we officially go into spring on Thursday. And then a 60% chance of some showers and storms Friday with that cold front. And look what it does to temperatures. 56 on Saturday with some lows back in the 40s. Feels like forever since we've seen numbers like that. Guys. At like don't forget to wear green tomorrow, everybody. That's right. Thank you, Justin, very much. You and I have worked together so long. I just by nature, I keep drifting left. I'm just so used to sitting closer <laughs> off, than this. Buddy. I know, I <laughs> will. I, know, I, I understand. I'm not taking it personally. Eh, a little bit. 950, <laughs> 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hey guys, how are you? Coming up on live, John Krasinski will be here. Yeah, John's going to tell us about his latest movie, A Quiet Place Part 2. We'll see you on live in just a few. We have more continuing coverage on the coronavirus on the news at noon, including answering some of your questions. That's right. One of our viewers asked if a pregnant mom can pass the virus on to our baby. We have the answer for you. Just tune in to the news at 9. And remember, if you have any questions you would like for us to answer, just submit them at SAQ on KSAT.com. News at noon. My apologies. I said nine, noon. I was really close, but it's actually noon. Oh, well, there's a, it's a little bit of recovery on the stock market. Not much. Still down a lot, but it's not as bad as it was. Down about 8%, but this is uh, going to fluctuate considerably today. Hopefully, they won't stop trading as they did earlier this morning. Right after the opening bell, it seemed like it was in free fall again. Justin? And uh, right now, temperatures are still in the mid 60s. We'll go upper 70s today. Some slight chances of a shower too. really our rain chances are pretty well in the next few days. We'll have to watch what goes on out west, but our best chance is going to be Friday with a cold front. And we do think this one will have a pretty significant impact on temperatures too. your kiddos home. They are. They are. Yes. So you have to think about things to do with them and all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Well, Scholastic is really stepping up to help parents. The educational company has launched a learn at home website that has daily courses for students pre-K to grade six and higher. From learning why zebras have stripes to math lessons based on K-pop stars, Scholastic's learning plans cover all of the subjects your student would be taking at school. Website divided into four sections based on grade level currently has five days worth of content and additional 15 days of content on the way according to Scholastic. The courses will provide approximately three hours of learning per day that includes writing, research projects, virtual field trips, and geography challenges. All right, here's the most important part. The website is accessible on any device that has internet and no sign up required. It will remain free and open indefinitely. According to the good folks over at Scholastic, if you're catching the tail end of this story, it also on our website at ksat.com. Nice. Yeah. Just gonna have to hide the television remote. That's the tough one. You gotta, or unplug the TV. That too. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great day.